Hello. We'll let the last couple of stragglers come in. Yeah, if you could maybe not leave random empty seats on the side so that latecomers can find seats. Um, I'm sorry that we're behind a podium. Uh, I wish that we could sit at the table and do this, but they have to record audio. So um, I know that this isn't ideal. Um, and maybe for the, com like the conversation part and the question answer part, we'll all kind of come forward a little bit. Um, hello, welcome. Um, this is the talk about the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group. Um, this is our official title. We wanted to pick something catchy, but also long. <laughs> so this is what we picked. Um, before, oh, wait. We have to figure out how to make the slides go forward. No, hit next. Oh, man, okay. Uh, that's fine. Everything's fine. Um, before we even tell you who we are, I want to talk about the goal of why we're here. Um, and it's not to define the bound, it's not to talk about what the intricacies of diversity are. It's not to talk about all the ways that we can include people. It's to talk specifically about what our group has done um, over the last year and to give you just enough context so that we can have a conversation about that, um, just as a little bit of level setting. Um, so I'll not speak for Ruby. I'm Nikki. Um, I've been in Drupal for about nine years. I don't know how old my D.O. account is, but um, I've been a programmer, a back-end dev for about 19 years. Um, and I started this whole thing after New Orleans, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Hey, I'm Ruby Sinreich. Um, I've been making websites mostly for nonprofit organizations since the mid-1990s. Um, and uh, I mean, it, just, it says it up there already. <laughs> Um, I usually when I'm doing a slide, I like to tell people like other stuff like that I'm a human being, I'm a mom, I live in Durham, North Carolina, um, and I love music and stuff like that. So, you know, like we're regular people and obviously you can, you can find us there. I'm also a human being. <laughs> uh, so just a little bit of background then on how the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group started, DD and I for short. Um, this is my little kind of rah-rah background. Um, I am here in Drupal, and I started this group because primarily I believe in open source. I believe in the values that it stands for. I believe in doing work and giving it away. Um, and I believe that that benefits all of us. Um, and I also believe related to open source and the power of community. So I believe in doing open source work by yourself, and I believe in doing open source work with other people who also believe in open source. Um, I believe in the power of individuals to change the communities that they're a part of. And we see this all the time with local neighborhood boards, and we see this on large scale with voting, right? Um, individuals as discrete units have the power to affect change, and individuals in collectives have even greater power to affect change. Um, we all have heard that Drupal is a duocracy. So when I looked at the Drupal community and I thought, well, um, I wish someone were doing this. Man, geez, if only someone would do this. And I thought about that honestly for a couple of years. Wow, we really need this. Why hasn't someone done this yet? Um, finally, I was like, well, damn it. <laughs> cool, okay. Uh, if I want this badly enough, I will just do it myself. Um, and I have not done it myself. I started it and have done it with a ton of other wonderful people. Um, but out of this philosophy came the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group. Um, and we are, and these are probably the most important things to know about us, we are volunteers and we work totally in the open. So all of the work that we do um, happens on GitHub because I'm a developer and I want to start something and so I just go put it on GitHub. Um, in retrospect, I could have maybe made a different choice uh, to make it more accessible for everybody. Um, but that's where we are. We might change that moving forward. One other thing about who we are is that we aren't affiliated with the Drupal Association. It's, it's a little confusing. And I have a they slide about that. Of, it's that important. Table, for example, but we don't have any, um, formal that's right. Um, we, people have said that we work in secret, whatever work it is that people think that we do, um, but we don't. Every, literally everything that we do is on GitHub. Everything is accessible. All of our meeting notes are there. Um, all of the things that we're going to be working on exist in our issue queue. And I think that's 
And our meetings are in Slack, which is also open. Um, some important things that we are not. We are not. You're laughing because affiliation with the DA is funny. I think, I'm sure that you, I'm sure that that's why you're laughing. Um, we're not affiliated with the Drupal Association, although like Ruby said, they gave us booth space very generously um, and they helped us, they printed the banner that Scott designed. Uh, but we're not affiliated with the DA, we're not affiliated with the community working group, we're not affiliated with Dries. Um, you know, he mentioned us this morning, but I didn't even know that he knew about us until a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we're not a bunch of other things. Um, we are not funded. We had a couple of people, uh, generous donors, donate to the photo booth that we're doing. Um, a company paid for our stickers, but we're not, in no way are we funded. Um, we don't report to anybody um, except ourselves and our own sense of right and wrong. Um, and we, in general, don't let people boss us around to the best of our ability. Um, so Ruby's gonna tell you about the things that we actually do. One of the things that I've been telling people a lot who visit our table is that um, because we're just a group of volunteers and members, we, what we do is based on the interests of the members of our group. Um, so for one thing, we're advocating for a more inclusive and more diverse Drupal community. Let's see, we have a thing about this, right? Now I have to drive. See, it's tricky, right? You're right, it's trickier than I thought. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we say a more diverse uh, community, um, anytime, as you probably know, anytime you try to list these kinds of things, it's extremely problematic. But um, we thought it'd be helpful to give some examples of what kind of thing we're talking about um, so that you can also understand what kind of thing we're not talking about. Um, and there's been, um, there's, there's been, there have been many um, different issues that have even come onto our radar in terms of different types of diversity that we might not have even thought about. Like I wasn't really thinking about ableism six months ago in the Drupal community, but now it's on my radar. Um, so we are, um, we are pretty broad, but not everything. <laughs> um, the next thing we do is advocate for more inclusive events. Um, there's a couple of ways we've done that. Um, what does that mean? Inclusion means not just like you look around the room and you see people who aren't just white men, but they're actually, people who aren't white men are, in, are, are part of the process, are, are engaged in every way as much as anybody else would be. Um, there's a lot of interesting language around this and I recommend Googling it because there's some great articles actually. Um, but specifically, some of the things we've done are um, helping the DA um, with organizing DrupalCon when they wanted to measure the d diversity of the group here. They added some demographic questions to the registration form this year, which I'm sure you all saw, and we helped advise them about how to do that because, again, those things are very fraught and there's no perfect way, but we tried to get the questions framed in a useful and productive way. Um, also, some folks in our group are working on a packet for camp organizers about how to make more inclusive events uh, at the local level as well. Feel free to jump in if I'm forgetting anything. Um, so, um, I don't know how much to say about this. This is something that comes up. <laughs> um, you know, diversity um, doesn't mean universalism. Um, and uh, for example, and we have another slide that mentions this later, but the, but to, the thing that I think explains it the best is um, if you make it a point to include every single person, that actually inherently excludes certain people. Because just to use the ridiculous example of Nazis, right? Like, oh, well, the, we can't exclude them just because they're Nazis. Well, if you include those people, then some other people may feel not so welcome, right? So there are some limits. Um, when we want to include people, it doesn't actually mean universal. <laughs> it means making the space an inclusive one for people who want to be in there and be a part of it. Is that making sense? <laughs> Um, so here's the, here's the resource packet for, um, for organizers, um, and this is all living on GitHub right now too, so anybody can contribute and help us out. Um, did we talk about our meetings? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, but hey, that's us. That's our photo booth. Um, so, yeah, look, we're wearing the same clothes. Um, <laughs> no trickery here. Um, so another awesome idea that one of, our, um, one of our group members had was to have a photo booth here at DrupalCon to take pictures to highlight the diversity of the Drupal community. Many of you all have already had your pictures taken. Um, if you haven't, you should come by. And um, we're, we're taking little tiny Polaroids that you can see on the back there and we're posting those on Instagram as well. And we're using the hashtag, which I love, I'm partial, uh, humans of Drupal. 
Hashtag. So if you like Humans of New York, it's kind of awesome. Um, so that's another example of making this event more diverse and, and inclusive for people because it's highlighting something. Yeah, you're, you're Drupal, and you're Drupal too, and you're Drupal, and all these people. Um, creating safe spaces um, such as our Slack. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, as you all, th this is, there's no official Drupal Slack, but um, one of the contributors to Drupal decided, hey, we ought to have a Slack. Um, and we have one, and there's just a few volunteer moderators. It's totally free. It functions a lot like IRC, always has, except that it's usable. <laughs> so, it's a slight improvement there. <laughs> I know, sorry. I know some people love their IRC, and much respect. but. Um, I turn it on and then I never go back there. But Slack, I leave it open all day and I'm there. Um, so we, we started a channel there and in addition to our meetings weekly uh, in Slack, we're, we're hanging out there all the time. Um, so that is a really great space, for, especially for if people are having issues where they can come and talk about them and we can figure out what might be needed. We can help back them up and say, no, you're not crazy, that was inappropriate or whatever it might be. Um, we can rally the troops <laughs> if needed. Um, and it's been a really great space. Is, is that our current number, 363 members? Um, as of about two weeks ago. Yeah, I think it's 400 now, right? Um, we used to have about 100 or so. What was it before? But there's been some greater interest. <laughs> um, but to be honest, not that many people are actually participating in the group. They're just hanging out in our Slack channel. But maybe, I think, because they feel like they can learn from us, and they can. A lot of people have come to our channel, frankly, just to sort of learn and get different perspectives. Um, again, especially recently when things have been really confusing and very complicated, um, we've had a space where people can safely talk about stuff, um, and it has been very, very helpful. Possibly too helpful? No. Um, Another great idea one of our members had was to have this flag of approachability um, because DrupalCon can be kind of intimidating and it's also just hard to talk to strangers always. Um, so you can come to our table, I've got a couple right here, and get these smiley, pin, uh, smiley face pins to put on your badge to show that strangers can come up and talk to you. And lots of you already have them, they're really awesome. I think it's perfect because I hate talking to strangers so it's a really great opening. Um, and then building capacity of our allies. Uh, this is about um, people, a lot of people want to be allies in the Drupal community. People want this to be a more inclusive space, but they don't always know how. Um, and nobody's, a, nobody's an expert, um, but it's another thing that we can do by, ha by even having the space where we have the conversations and where we talk to each other and where we share resources and new perspectives with each other. So this is sort of showing on the right, um, going, going from active opposition all the way over to being active allies. Um, and I have definitely seen some people, and even I on certain issues, have, have um, moved across the spectrum um, on, on different issues. Um, people, we, we really, ha we have a really great group in there and we have really been able to help each other a lot and learn a lot from each other. Um, and hearing each other's perspectives is fascinating. For example, as you can see, I've been involved with Drupal for a long time, but I don't really know how those inner workings and stuff go. But there's some people in our channel who are core contributors who've been involved for a decade or more, and they have some different perspectives that I've, that I've never been exposed to, and I learned a lot from that. They also didn't realize what it looks like to be someone like me, who's like, what the hell's going on here? Why is Dries like, what? You know, because if you're a core contributor, you work with Dries every day, you don't know what that's like to be us. So we're all benefiting by um, sharing those perspectives um, and um, making better allies within the Drupal community so that folks can be more effective advocates. And just on a non, yeah. um, just in a, like a, a technical ecosystem, um, it's been really good for me personally to remember that people are not, not everybody's a developer. Uh, just like I started my thing and I put it on GitHub, everybody will be fine. Uh, and so talking to people who are site builders and project managers and content strategists and designers and all of those things has been really helpful. I can do you anyway. Oh yeah, here's how we got here, yeah, on a calendar. Uh, I'm not a designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all know. Um, so just if you're curious, we started in New Orleans. We met in IRC in June. We migrated over to Slack in June. <laughs> um, the wonderful folks at Drupal Camp Costa Rica highly recommended it. Um, they had me down and I keynoted about diversity down there. 
um, which kicked off some more stuff. We went to Bad Camp, and a bunch of people who are more organized than me were like, hey, probably get a domain name, probably sign up for Twitter. So I had a lot of help with that. And then um, we did a diversity of the web survey, which is still going on. We still need people to take that survey. Um, and then in January, around that time, we helped the DA with some Baltimore stuff. Um, up next is a meme. Ready? We made it, yeah. We didn't, we didn't find it online. So I'm, I think, uh, Obviously this is all to be taken with a gigantic grain of salt, right? We love everybody. Most people, we love most, I love most That's people. True. I'm not trying to speak for, as, as a global we. Um, and for uh, our organization, there is no global we. We, as an organization, are just a group of people. Um, if anyone says, we, as Dee Dee and I, do X, and we believe X, um, we don't have any positions on anything officially, right? We have some guidelines within which we work. Um, we have a strategy meeting tomorrow, at which point we may decide that we have an official spokesperson or we have an official position on something. But right now, we don't. We're just an organization that's doing things um, and we're just here to talk about the things that we do and to get more people involved and to answer questions that you have. Um, do you want to talk about the things that we have accidentally done over the last couple of weeks? Sure. Also, um, one of the things I um, was worried about a lot just in making this meme in general and all this stuff is um, to avoid the perception that we're a bunch of white women doing this stuff is actually a much more diverse group than that. And a lot of you are in the room. So anybody who's been active in our Slack channel, please stand up right now. Look at our awesome posse. Yay. Yay. Um, and there's more, but that's just who's here, just so you can see. It's not just us. Um, so the recent unpleasantness. Um, so what happened is, um, is there, you all know about um, the situation with Larry Garfield, right? This is going to be the first time. Anyway. You, you like for sure. OK. Um, so I've had some practice at this. Let's, let's, hopefully I'll, you know. This is why Ruby's doing this part. <laughs> OK. So as Dries mentioned this morning, um, recently a contributor, a very involved core contributor, was asked to leave the community um, and was also uh, relieved of his position as a track chair for DrupalCon. Um, and uh, there, a lot of people have strong feelings about it. Um, it's a very complicated issue. Um, some people, um, in my, my opinion, have looked at it as sort of black and white. Um, but it, there are many, many shades of gray. It's very complicated. Um, I'll tell you what happened to me uh, the morning I woke up and uh, found in the Slack channel someone who's in Europe had already posted a link to a blog post by Larry who had been asked to leave. And I read that and I was like, what the? F yeah, this is not, this is unfair. What the hell? Burn it down. This isn't right. And so um, I start, you know, we're all in there we're posting. We're going, what? Blah, blah, blah. But because of the benefit of the many perspectives that we have in our channel, um, I learned much more about the various uh, complexities of the situation. The history, I never even worked with this person, which most of the people who have opinions about it don't, as a matter of fact, right? I've never worked with this person. I didn't know what they were like. Um, I learned about the history of their relationship. I learned about the process, because I didn't understand um, what the community working group was doing and what it wasn't. Um, and I think we all agree. One thing that I think everybody agrees on um, is that we have discovered, if you didn't already know, that there are some real problems in our community structure. We're lacking the infrastructure to handle issues like this. Um, but um, through participating in the channel, I learned about what, how things went and that it did follow the process that it's supposed to follow. Um, and throughout the day, more and more people were going through that same process I was going, what? Um, and in our channel, we just kept talking to each other. We kept processing things. We're like, well, but I'm still concerned about this. And they're just, they're, you know, endless concerns. Yeah. Yeah. We're, thank goodness for the adorable dogs in our channel. Because um, that, that's what I look like. 
what? <laughs> um, and all day long, people keep coming in, and actually not all day long, but then actually for weeks. Um, and because we were, and frankly, we, we're pretty active about moderating our channel, um, and I have a lot of experience running online communities locally um, and in various places, actually not just locally. Um, and, but we stayed on top of it, uh, everyone in our channel who we had already been there, and this is important that we had been there working with each other for months and months at that point, so we trusted each other. If someone else said, well, but you need to think about this, Ruby, I'd say, yeah, but you're just saying that because you're a white man or something. But I knew these people, and they knew me, we're allies. Uh, it's true. Um, that, that trust was really important to us, being able to have a good conversation there. Um, and so... Um, because we had these great conversations and were able to um, be rational about it, which there wasn't that much going on at the time, um, more and more people were referred to us. Um, and when people had concerns, folks from the Drupal board and others were just saying, go talk to the diversity and inclusion group because they, I don't know, understand it or something. Um, which was interesting because it meant that we, were, that we were very busy acting as therapists for several weeks of all the angry people coming in there. Um, now, some people were, just like your therapist would say, right? Some people were ready to change. <laughs> some people, not so much. Um, and people who came in with their guns blazing and not listening um, usually left really angrily after a little while because we didn't really tolerate that foolishness. It's our space. That's like our room where we do our stuff, and we weren't going to have them coming in there, you know, crapping all over us um, and over things that we care about. So... Um, that has caused our group's profile to be raised a lot, uh, much more than we intended or anticipated. Um, but you know, the silver lining, obviously, is that now people know what we're doing. Um, and a lot of people did listen. A lot of, a lot of people joined our group since then and, and became participants. Um, and a lot of people are seeing the needs for improvements in the community, partially related to the situation with Larry and partially related to the broader perspective. Is that good? So, um, what's cool about this is you're all here, right? All of a sudden, all of these people, whether they had thought about it or not, are like, we need to think about how people experience our communities. Um, whichever side you're on, if, if you believe in taking sides even. Um, I, there are already sides. I'm just being diplomatic. Um, but, but still, people are now thinking, well, how do I feel as a member of this community? Do I feel safe in this community? Do the, does the person next to me feel safe in this community? Um, and those are things that are important. Those are questions we should always be asking. Um, is this person who I'm passing in the hallway having an okay experience? Are they feeling threatened? Are they feeling safe? Um, which means that it's time to join the duocracy and it's time to get involved. Um, one of the common pieces of feedback that I got before recent events um, was people would say, oh, well, I'm you know, I'm just, I'm just me. I shouldn't get involved. Whatever dimension of identity they thought that they needed to have in order to be an ally, they felt like they were missing. Does that make sense? People would say, you know what, I'm just, just, I'm just a white guy. I, I don't, I can't be, I can't help. Um, and I'm here to say that that's not true. Um, if you didn't receive one in the mail, this is your official invitation uh, to join us uh, to get on the ally spectrum um, and to let us help you figure out ways that you can be an ally that's sustainable for you. Um, I'm going to do a tiny plug for my talk on Thursday called 100 Ways to Be an Ally. There are literally 100. There are more. I'm only sharing 100 of them with you in 30 minutes, ways that you can be an ally. Um, and in there, you'll find ways that are sustainable for you um, to be a part of this. But specifically, you can get involved in our GitHub repo, um, and if you have GitHub phobia or other GitHub challenges, come talk to me, we'll figure it out. Uh, we have weekly meetings in our Slack channel. You can follow us on Twitter. Ruby runs our social media, which is a Herculean task, especially lately. Um, and you can come to our booth and take pictures. And four minutes early, we will start the questions. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Um, Kathy just made a great point of reminding me to explain how this works. 
Uh, core conversations is where we talk for 30 minutes and then we do Q&A for 30 minutes. So that's the track that we're in. Um, so we have done our 24 and a half minutes of talking. Um, and now we have about 30 minutes if you want to talk about what we're doing. You have questions about diversity or inclusion or the Drupal community or anything that you want. And if you don't have any, you can leave. But. Hi, my name is Bladwin. I'm a human as well. Welcome, um, human. Thank you. It wasn't hard. I was born this way. Um, so you mentioned tolerance. And you were specifically mentioned you can't tolerate the intolerant. It's like you can't rationalize with the irrational, which is a really good point to make, right? So where do we draw a line, both actively, but not, not make that a hard line that is discriminatory, right? I think that's where this makes that this becomes complicated. Like, how do we set a guideline to be inclusive and have certain tolerances without objectifying other people based on those tolerances and that, those values? Because if we create a box or a whitelist or a blacklist, that's immediately discriminatory, right? So that's I think why this group exists, so that we can ebb and flow with the community at large. And, and kind of define our diversity by our actions, right? So not exactly a question. I did this wrong. You did okay. You did great. But, Thank you. But it's hard I, to go first. Right, but I think that kind of, that's kind of the impetus for this, right? Like why we're having this boff now at this event, you know, and why we're getting a lot of people involved in this group even more now, because it's really in the light, right? We, mm -hmm. we all see this as a big issue. Mm -hmm. And just like when we went from archaic PHP to new PHP, we now have to go from old governance to new governance. It's a hard transition. Well, we're not going to talk about governance. Sure, sure. <laughs> so I but, will draw one line there. <laughs> but diversity plays a role in that. It, it does. So I, I will just address this last part, and then I'll let Ruby talk about tolerance. Um, I'll tolerate Ruby talking about tolerance. Um, Governance conversations are happening. Community governance conversations are happening. For those of you who don't know, um, they're in an office a couple of sky bridges away. Um, we have pamphlets on our DNI table if you want to figure out how to get there and what they're about. Um, and they're specifically for people who have concerns about the governance model, about how the working group made the choices that they made, how Dries made the choice that he made, and whether or not those are the right choices in the right way. Um, those concerns are real and valid and also outside of our initial scope. Um, so just there's that. Um, as for tolerance, um, well, I wanted to say, if you think about the, um, that little diagram of the ally spectrum, um, one of the things that I think is useful to think about is if, if, if you're thinking about an, a person who's, who seems intolerant, um, there's, they're a person, just like us, um, and there's, personally, I believe there's potential for good in every single person. That's just like a a personal belief that I have. Um, and so I would think that spectrum include, started with active opposition. That's what's on that. But, that's, but it's not, there's no big line between it. There's a gradual little process. So um, if there's a way to um, work with someone to help make, convert them from, an, from opposition to neutral, you know, and possibly onto ally, ideally, right? Um, then I think it's productive to make that space and to be open to people who want to, you know, who are, who are open to that and who have the potential for that. Um, but the, on the flip side is we do want to have a safe space. Um, and so if people's behavior is a problem um, that is disruptive to others, that is threatening to others, that is making people just not feel welcome in the space, because that's a real problem. I mean, as you know, not just women have imposter syndrome. Last year I went to the little imposter syndrome talk and I was like, there's men here? Men have that? It's true. Like all of us, really all of us struggle with like, do I belong here, right? And so th that's why I think it's important not to make space for people who are gonna make others not feel welcome. So there's never gonna be one single line. And our group doesn't have any official positions about that, so we don't have like a talking point, this is okay and this isn't okay. But it's a spectrum. <laughs> um, so the people who are actively intolerant, right? There has to be a willingness on, or actively opposed, what right? What does active intolerance mean when you say that, though? Well, I meant actively opposed, sorry, okay. on the spectrum. I misspoke. Yeah. 
So correction, actively opposed. There has to be a willingness in those individuals to want to change their mm -hmm. behavior. So how do we as a group, as a community, as other humans, mm -hmm. kind of facilitate that change? How do we do it in a way that is not discriminatory or defamatory or negative? Um, that, well, that I think is a really hard I think problem. you do it with things like codes of conduct where you basically say, if you want to be a part of this community, here are some of the baselines that the community agrees are needed. And if people can't deal with that, they can, then they've made the choice to opt themselves out of it, basically. So I mean, I think it's by, it's by defining what your norms are going to be. Um, and, and so that, by that way, you can say, well, this action, this isn't conforming. This is not OK. Of course, that is very hard to write those. <laughs> Um, so you kind of already answered my question, so maybe I shouldn't even ask it, but it was a, on a similar vein to that, like where to draw the line for not being tolerant of intolerance. Like the, the idea is, of course, that you don't want to include people who make other people feel uncomfortable, and the Nazi example is so easy. I know. Because... <laughs> it's lazy, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, because Nazis actively want the genocide of certain people, but then there's so much gray area. Like, for example, and I don't want anyone to take offense to this, but to say, like, a Trump voter. Mm -hmm. They don't actively want to kill someone, but they might have, or someone else might assume that they have opinions about, for example, Mexican. So if you are, have Mexican heritage, maybe if there's a Trump person there, you would feel unincluded. Mm -hmm. So then how do you make those? Well, again, that's why it comes back to the sort of saying, you know, this is a community that respects people and doesn't tolerate racist speech, for example. So that if, so that, you know, we have to, you can't police people's thoughts, you know, um, mm -hmm. only their behavior. Um, one of the, the problem is that a lot of behavior isn't recognized um, as being problematic when it actually is. Um, so I think that's something that we need to work on more. Um, if you think about, you know, sort of the history of people, you know, like this, I don't know if I should go into this, but like the, the famous thread about um, the gender form on, on, Drup on Drupal.org, right? Like people can all be very polite and they're not breaking any rules of civility, but they can still be doing things that are hostile and make other people not feel welcome by, by literally not recognizing their own gender identity, for example. So um, I think it should still be focused on, sp on actions and not thoughts, but that we have to um, recognize a lot more actions as problematic than we do right now. And I, and I will add that as a developer, um, I want to write everything down, and I want things to be explicit, and I want to factor for edge cases, right? And I want to I have a flow chart for everything, and I want to be prepared for everything. Um, and I mean, not even that that always works in engineering, right? But that's the instinct. And I think um, what I have found over the last year and before is that this is so much on a case-by-case -case basis, and so much conversation and empathy and back and forth and listening and clarification is needed that it really is. It's like, okay, well, in this case, it, this seemed offensive, but it's actually okay. Someone, you know, two people in good faith misunderstood each other. In this case, it seemed okay, but it was actually very problematic. Um, and that's really frustrating. Thank you. Um, so kind of in response to Eric's question slash problem statement, um, and it, and a response to a couple of things I think Ruby said during the dialogue, I think it's important to remind ourselves that intolerance is not a trait of a person. People have the capacity to change, and it's important to remember that people have a variety of different motivations or exposure to like how to not be exclusive, right? Um, so it it's I I, I just want to encourage us to be careful to not assume that, that there is a binary thing. Just, just if someone does something once and the first time you call them out on, on doing something that was maybe you shouldn't have said this horribly offensive thing, their first reaction the first time they hear it might be just to get defensive and put up a wall and not listen. Um, and then maybe the second time they hear it, maybe they hear it and like, oh, someone told this to me before. Uh, why are they saying this? Maybe I'll listen for a little bit before I get angry, or I'll, I'll, I'll get angry and then I'll listen the second time. Um, and, and I think that we, like, it's important to remember that, that when someone, like, we're all going to screw up at some point and, and do things that are wrong. So I, I, I just wanted to encourage us to not say this person is intolerant because I, I, people have the capacity to become, you know, better and, and, and learn from others. So that's, that's all. That's my comment which is not a question. Oh, I'm Jocelyn, I'm also human, sorry. I didn't follow the rules, sorry, Kathy. <laughs> she only cares about the mic. <laughs> 
Uh, and I, yeah, and that's exactly what we saw over those weeks after um, the Larry Garfield situation happened. We saw people come in with guns blazing, um, being very uh, oppositional, saying oppositional things, and then being exposed, 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 and kind of being really chiller about it. Um, even if their beliefs hadn't changed, right, they were able to engage in constructive conversation that helped people. And it went from like, no, you're dumb, to like, oh, okay, we disagree, but I still respect you as a person. Right? Uh, and that's the goal. Ult I mean, ultimately, that's the goal is like, I think your idea is stupid, but I still respect you, and I'm, you know, we're still physically safe with each other. Hi, Angie. Hi. I just wanted to say on that note that I really appreciate what you guys have, sorry, what you folks have been doing. Um, no, seriously, because um, it's, been a, it's been a really shitty couple of weeks, and um, I think having somebody disconnected from the different organizations and power structures that you are, doing the important work that you're doing has been insanely valuable. Um, because I've witnessed that, I'm sorry I'm not very active in your channel, I didn't stand at the time, but, um, but I observe, and I observe that, that literally anyone is welcome in that room, even if they're hot-headed, even if they're, they're mouthing off at first, they'll be treated like a person, they'll be saying, I understand you're upset, you know, talk to me about what's going on. They're able to have a sounding board that is neutral and, and encourages dialogue. And I've seen you change hearts and minds by treating people like people. And I think that is really important because this issue has been so incredibly divisive and it's required all these people to choose sides and get pitchforks and stuff. And it's like, no, we don't need any of that. We need to remember that we're all here because we love being here, I like these people are like my people, you know, it's like, and I just wanted to say thank you because I've been on the back end of this kind of, you know, talking, ah, don't say that, and, ah, you know, like this is what I do, but, um, but you know, I'm just trying to, to manage that whole situation. And so having folks on the front lines who are really, um, really genuinely interested in, in, in actual diversity and inclusion of all broad spectrums of ideas and trying to get everyone to a common understanding and a place where we can like, talk to each other, thank you. I just wanted to say thank you. So I'm Kathy, and I have some experience working in open source, and I hear some words that people use, uh, like Angie, like we value the work that you do, and uh, in the keynote, you know, like things are really important, and what are we gonna do about this? And it reminds me that it upsets me because um, I see people who, it's difficult for them to do this work, um, and they're being asked sometimes to do it um, without um, assistance, support um, that could be useful to accomplish that important work that we're really thankful for. Um, so I think it's frustrating to be like, uh, when something happens in the community, like, hey, go talk to those diversity and inclusion people. <laughs> like, they have all the time in the world and their lives aren't hard. Mm -hmm. So let's add some more work to them. So I find that upsetting in a similar way that I have wanted the way that we fund development on open source to change. I feel like if something is really important to us, then we need to make it um, really important and not burden people who may not have the resources or the power to be accomplishing the work or make changes. So it's just, there's like an element to this that is um, worrisome. So also not a question, sorry. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a it's not core questions, it's core conversation. Uh, yep, uh, I yeah. agree with that. Um, I will say personally, I couldn't have done it this this year without Canopy, without working for Canopy and letting them be flexible with me to work later hours because I'm running meetings or just even being here. Um, so I've been very lucky. Um, but I 
do think that Canopy shouldn't be subsidizing the work for the community. <laughs> uh, we do need to figure out a way to do it. Uh, we have a strategy meeting tomorrow, we're looking into it, but to Angie's point, we exist outside existing power structures. That's also part of what's so valuable. And so it's how can we be sustainable and how can we prevent burnout and how can we care for the people doing this work, myself included, right? How can we care for everybody who's doing this um, and also not make them beholden to someone's bank account? Um, and I have to believe, like any new engineering challenge, there is a solution to this. We'll probably get it wrong. Maybe, maybe we'll get it right the first time. Who knows? Probably not, though, Kathy. Probably not. Um, <laughs> it is tricky. Uh, but it's something that we think, because if we were just, if the next year were like the last two months, we wouldn't make it the next year. Right? So something has to shift a little bit. Yeah, and I, just, I really appreciate you saying that, because there has been a lot of that, and it's hard, you can't really see it. We had people come into the community who were just like really angry and talking about everything and governance. And we were just like, look, can you go to the governance channel or something? And they're like, well, I was told to come talk to you. <laughs> like that actually happened. And then I was like, who told you that? What? You know, so that is, that's been happening. And so I do appreciate the recognition. I, I think that's getting better, though. I think people were just, everyone was freaking out and just going, ah, you know, yeah. so it's getting better. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say something pretty similar to Kathy, I guess. Um, What's your name? I'm sorry, my name is Matt, uh, and yes, I'm a human. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's, this is an amazing initiative that uh, you and a few other people are, are doing, um, but like, you can, I'm, I'm assuming you can only be the unpaid therapist of the Drupal community for a, like, a, like, it's probably already too long. Um, yeah, and then on top of that, there's the burden that like, this is people who um, have less privilege in a community for the most part who are stepping up because they're the ones who see this as a problem. Um, there's, uh, so even though they're probably already doing more work than other folks just to like tread water and stay in the community, there's the fact that I see often in mostly male communities that like a small number of women are responsible for the um, like emotional tone and maintenance of that because that work is just invisible to everyone else despite the fact that it's obviously necessary. Um, so yeah, I guess my question was like, how long do you think you can keep this up? Slash, what's your strategy <laughs> going forward? Because, like, like uh, other than like just you know handing out stickers and getting lots of people to join this channel and, and get excited, like I, I'm assuming you're thinking about that at least some of the time. So yeah, yeah, and, we and are. How, and how can so it like and you're and you're talking about how how you said you're going to give another talk about how people can be allies, which I guess maybe this is a segue into that. But like how like yeah, what's where, where do you see this going? Um, how can people help specifically with this issue is if you are someone who is business minded or uh, human network minded, come, come give suggestions. Um, if you're someone who has organized large groups of people in sustainable ways, let's talk and brainstorm how we can apply that. Um, and the other challenge though is that a lot of this work is one-on-one -on -one work and it's hard to scale one-on-one -on -one work up, right? So getting more people in the channel is not always, it's more work <laughs> because now there's more people. Um, so one thing that I've personally been thinking about is how to make a network for men to do this work with each other because a lot of the problems, and this, don't take this the wrong way, men are making these problems um, and the, the problems are trickling down, right? So how can we have men on the front lines supporting other men to do this work with each other? And that would take a huge burden off of so many people who are already marginalized. Um, and so if anyone wants to lead that male initiative, come at me. That would be amazing. <laughs> you have to say, come at me, bro. That's yes, <laughs> come at us, bro. There are some white male longtime contributors who've been really active with this and have been incredible allies and advocates. And it helps us so much when they are visibly on our sort of team or whatever you want to call it. It's been, that's been very helpful. So there's a, there's a great role for allies to play there, for sure. Uh, hi, I'm Molly. I'm a human, maybe part alien, so, you know. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you both for um, your work. Um, I recently actually um, had an incident, and I had to sort of um, come to the channel and l look for some guidance and some, some support, and it was just really, um, really amazing, and I really uh, appreciated that, so I wanted to say that. 
And I also wanted to sort of um, ask a question, sort of posit sort of a, a comment around and the work you guys are doing, a lot of it is online, right? It's, it's communication in a text-based format online. And I was just wondering, has there been any strategies you guys had around like this week, at DrupalCon, um, are there things that one-on-one -on -one in person um, can be achieved that maybe you've been, you've been building up to with certain interactions? Or are there things that we can do while we're here this week to really help um, forward that? I know you're going to talk about stuff in your allies talk or something maybe potentially. But um, so I was just wondering sort of we have an opportunity here. We're all in person. We're not necessarily in a chat room. So what can we do this week to really, um, you know, foster inclusion and togetherness and unity and, and look at everyone like the beautiful humans that we are and um, the work that we're doing in open source and free software, et cetera? That's a great question. Um, I'll start. <laughs> Um, we don't have like a specific, you know, there's no like, do this one thing. Um, but we do have a table, again, generously hosted by the Drupal Association. And um, you can do our humans of Drupal, which is a very low bar ask of anybody, but really want you all to come there. Um, I'll tell you all a funny story. I think this is funny. Um, when we were planning this, <laughs> somebody, somebody hit me, if not. Um, when we were planning our, the photo booth, the humans of Drupal, and the, the, the woman who's the mastermind of that is not even in the room, but I really want to give a shout out to Alana. Alana Burke, amazing. Amazing work. Um, we were like, so we're going to do these pictures and we're going to post them online and it's, and it's we are Drupal, our hashtags are we are Drupal and humans of Drupal. And we were like, what if a bunch of white men come and take their picture? And it's like, that's a Drupal, a bunch of white guys. And we we're like, well, that is Drupal in a certain way. <laughs> Um, so we're like, well, I guess, you know, and, um, and as a matter of fact, that has not been a problem at the table. We've had so many different kinds of people that I actually have been actively reaching out to white people, white men who walk by <laughs> because I'm like, please come take your picture. Here's what it doesn't look like. We're just setting this up as a thing, you know. Um, but so I'm telling you that to tell you that all of you, please come take your pictures. And especially if you're like, oh, I'm a white guy. I'm not who they're talking about. You are who we're talking about. We want your pictures in there too because, again, the whole point is the, d this is important for all of us. There's, you know, all those articles that are like, diversity is good for your bottom line and <laughs> helps you think better and stuff like that. So diversity is not a women's problem or people of color or queer or, you know, whatever problem. It's everybody's problem, and you can show that you're an ally by, by coming to our booth and having your picture taken and saying, yeah, this is what I'm down with also. And then you can retweet it when we post your picture and stuff like that. And definitely do come to the ally talk, because again, that's really what's been so helpful with people being allies so far, and there's tons more everybody can do. Anything else? Mm, I think something else, just if you, if you say, okay, well, I can't do anything for the rest of the year. I can be an ally while I'm at DrupalCon. I don't know why that would be true, but if that's true, um, make direct eye contact with people when you see them in the hallway and smile at them. Um, especially if they look like people you don't see all the time, whatever that means to you, right? Literally just say, hey, how, how's your morning, good morning? Um, and that's really hard if you're introverted or have social anxiety, um, but that's one way that you can just make the space feel friendlier. <coughs> Yeah, thank you for that. And I think that that's a great idea. Just if you see someone alone who looks like they're a little bit lost or feels out of place, just reaching out to them. So thanks for that. All right, thank you guys. Thanks, Molly. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for your work. Uh, thank you for all you do. And everybody in this room for being a part of this conversation. I think that's, that's really huge to, to pro be proponents for more diversity and inclusion in Drupal. Uh, I'm Justin, as a white-ish male, I'm interested in, in not being part of a problem anymore. Is there any resources that you could actively suggest or recommend? Come Am to I the talk on Thursday. Besides okay. the talk, are there any books, yeah. literature? Resources yeah. page too. Oh, we yeah. also have a resources page. Perfect. On our website, yes. drupaldiversity.com. Yes. Um, <laughs> our website is drupaldiversity.com. <laughs> um, <laughs> And there's a resources section there where we've collected links. Um, and if anybody has great links about this stuff that they want to share of like videos, talks, articles that help explain these things, because we do get a lot of requests from people just to like, they're like, okay, I think you have a pretty good point. How do I get my coworkers to understand this? Stuff like that. So come check out the resources page and send us other good ones. Can I ask one? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry to jump in front of you. Uh, gender is over if you want it. Um, 
Uh, I also think coming to the Slack meetings and even just observing, mm -hmm. I see so many good constructive behaviors modeled there every week. Well, actually 24 seven right now, but um, I just think it's a great way to get into the conversation and to hear mm -hmm. what people are concerned about and um, dip your toes in. Also, also, if you um, want to help but are feeling weird and you are someone who feels really comfortable contributing code and doing patches and that kind of stuff, um, one way that you can contribute is just to help us gather information and put it out in a way that makes sense. Uh, that like organizational stuff, um, I'm really bad at, so. Hey. Hi. Uh, I'm Chris. Um, my organization is Digital Bridge Solutions. We're sort of interested in improving the diversity of the uh, Drupal community here. We are actually doing an event tomorrow with Palantir. We are bringing six students from an uh, organization called Empower. They represent disadvantaged or underrepresented uh, groups, and we're going to bring them out to DrupalCon, and we sponsored their tickets. I think that's really cool. I would encourage other I folks to really do cool the same uh, at camps. We would love to make this bigger next year. Instead of do six, do like 60. So if you're interested in being part of that, I would love to talk to you about uh, increasing representation of, of underrepresented groups at Drupal. Yeah. And, and to his point, if there are ways you want to get involved but none of our ways work for you, we can figure out ways that'll work for you, right? So that is another way that you can get involved. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm a cisgendered white male, but I'm here ready to go. <laughs> but not, it's not a but, it's an and. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with yeah. being whoever you are, <laughs> for the record. Um, my question, well, uh, first of all, thanks again uh, so much for everything you guys are doing. Like, like um, you know, it's, it's so, it's so, it's unfortunate, like, like, um, like we're talking about that, it's coming down to the um, kind of, I guess you consider the like kind of minority groups like having to do most of the work. So I think that's why we do need to encourage involvement. And I think just having this core conversation is so helpful in that, and I think hopefully this will be some kind of standing uh, thing at DrupalCons going Definitely. forward uh, with the booth. Um, but my question slash uh, conversation point would be, uh, in going forward, you know, hopefully there's a silver lining to this um, controversy, similar to you know the Trump election, how that has spurred a lot of political activity across the country, a lot of engagement. Um, I think this similarly seems to be a great thing, you know, who would think that this would be such a, a full room, you know, of people involved right now. Um, and I'm thinking especially with Drupal 8 being so much more integrated with the larger community now, like we're tied into so much more of the PHP community and beyond now that Drupal is opening up itself, um, it seems like we can actually be a beacon to the rest of um, the kind of tech community in general as we open up our own uh, APIs and everything, uh, and so I'm curious if there's been conversations around that, or like if any kind of plans ahead of that. You know, how can we then even reach out beyond to further communities and try to kind of spread this message, encourage these kinds of conversations going forward in in communities even beyond Drupal? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think for me personally, again, not speaking for the group, for me personally, I always feel like you know you should make sure your own house is clean before you go clean someone else's. Um, and so it would be great, you know, we do have this wonderful opportunity to affect change in governance, in um, community culture, and so it's like, well, let's give it a year. Let's make some changes, give it a year. And if we make great changes, I think other communities will pay attention. We have 10 minutes left, thank you. Um, but, but if you wanna start talking about how do we do outreach now, let's go. Come to the, come to the meetings. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Hi, uh, Damien. Hi, Damien. Human, alien, but anyway. Um, bunny. And bunny, yes. Uh, have you heard any uh, positive results yet of people who said, like, um, I was considering leaving, but because there's so much theoretically hopeful momentum behind inclusion that they've decided to stick around longer? Only like one. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, they might not be reporting to us. Yeah, they might not be reporting to us. I've, I've talked to specifically with people who like I said, were really, really, really angry, and they felt very personally slighted by what had happened, um, come into the channel and say, okay, well now I'm back to neutral. Um, not hopeful, but I'm back to zero, and maybe I can get to hopeful in the future. Um, but I haven't heard of anyone who's like, I'm out, and then totally changed their mind. I feel like people are, a lot of people are cautiously optimistic. 
Hi, I'm Eric. I'm a human at his first DrupalCon. Welcome. And, um, Yay. Um, and I think it's a great time to be at my first DrupalCon. Um, and that is because of this idea of crisis is opportunity. And I got to experience this in a couple of ways, one very personal, but one very public in the form of, I work at Ithaca College in last, in 2015, we had a diversity crisis. Uh, and, you know, at the time, it, it seemed, uh, you know, to shake the foundations of our community. What is a diversity crisis? There were, there was a lot of racially charged um, issues. I, I don't want to try to characterize that specifically um, b because what I think that is important is that the community felt threatened by, uh, by division that were around these kinds of issues. And the response is what I want to point at um, because, you know, these things are very hard and they are, they are long work. And one of the most amazing things to me out of that process, the process that has, that emerged from that, is the people coming together to have conversations and doing this over time, not just like, okay, we're gonna have the public meeting, we're gonna have a conversation today, but coming back week after week after week, and I hear you talk about a, uh, a Slack meeting that you have. Those kinds of conversations are the kinds of events that I have found in the process that we experienced are the most transformative. You know, showing up and starting to get other perspectives that take a lot of time to get through. So I, um, I want to applaud you all for being in the, the thick of this. And um, yeah, I'm going to check out the, uh, uh, the, the weekly Slack meeting, it sounds like exists, and, and would say, people, please be engaged in those kind of things. You know, if you're going to be doing those kind of things at Drupal meetups, finding the ways to have these hard conversations to do it in person and be vulnerable and be open to connecting with people. I think that's, that's where you get it. Thank you. Uh, we are basically out of time, so just a quick call out. Uh, Ruby has a pretty tight name on Twitter, so not hard to find. I did that. Um, I'm Dr. Nikki. We're on Twitter as Drupal Diversity. Um, contribution sprints are happening on Friday. Uh, if you can be a Drupal mentor, be one. It's so good. Mentoring is so amazing if you can do it. Um, or come to mentored sprints. Um, the diversity group might be sprinting on some other stuff also, um, if that's how you want to get involved. Uh, there's a survey somewhere. Oh, it's right there. Uh, please fill out a survey about our talk. And that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Come to our booth.